All right, welcome. Um, this is worksheet number three, uh, dealing with the ideal gas law um, that you watched the videos of yesterday um, and putting in Dalton's law. Um, I'm gonna try to do uh, one through four um, on this video and then try to do the other four um, on another video. Um, this first one is really good. It's like the lab we're going to do. Um, and therefore, if I'm doing it now, we're gonna do it in the lab. Um, it's probably gonna be on the test. So um, hopefully you tried it, um, and then this will give you uh, clarification if you missed anything. So let us begin. All right, so um, mine looks a little different just because I gave myself a little bit more space um, to be able to write. Um, the first thing is up top, you have a water vapor um, pressure table, and now, we're gonna to have to use Dalton's law in uh, this question, but in any question, it talks about collecting this gas over water um, because water does have uh, a little bit of pressure in there. And so we'll use Dalton's law to figure out some things and I'll show you that. So, all right, let's begin. A reaction takes place between magnesium and hydrochloric acid, HCl. Um, we had a real small piece, 0 0.0506 grams of magnesium. Uh, the corresponding temperature of the system was 24 degrees Celsius. That's key, obviously. Remember, we'll change that to Kelvin, um, which produced some water vapor pressure of 22.4 millimeters of mercury. There was 52.7 milliliters of hydrogen um, produced, and the atmospheric pressure was 754.2 millimeters of mercury. So there's a lot of stuff going on right there. Um, we got to go through it all and see what we need to do. So we don't need to panic. We know we're going to use uh, Dalton's law. Um, the first question is we got to balance it. And we're going to see why we need to balance this as we go. We know that we have magnesium and we said it reacts with HCl. Now, I don't tell you what happens, but by reading, we could kind of see or hopefully see that we're gonna make some hydrogen gas. Uh, and that's the big point of this one. So we're gonna make hydrogen gas. I'm just gonna put it right here. And remember, hydrogen is a diatomic. Um, and maybe you recognize that this is a single replacement. And so what that means is Mg replaces H and we can see that. So we got to write this. Now we got to remember Mg is a plus two. So Cl is a minus one. We need to have a two. And then let's balance this quickly. One, two, one, one. So there's our first start. And now this question kind of leads you to it. It says, what's the pressure of the hydrogen gas? Um, and we sometimes we try to do Boyle's law or something, or maybe even try to throw in the ideal gas law. But this is where we're going to use Dalton's law. Now, remember, Dalton's law is whatever the total pressure is, that equals all the small pressures in there. So I'll write it kind of small. This would be the pressure of the atmosphere or the total pressure equals the pressure. And in this case, we did it with water plus the pressure of what we're looking for, the hydrogen gas. So we really want to find the pressure of the hydrogen gas. Um, reading into the question, this is where this stuff comes. Atmospheric pressure. That's the total pressure because that's what we feel right now. Um, so when you hear the word uh, atmospheric pressure, that's the total, if you will. So I can put that down here, 754.2. And now it gives us the water vapor pressure of 22.4. So now we can solve for the pressure of the hydrogen. But I wanna stop right there. If it didn't give us the water vapor pressure, we can find it on that table above. This was done at 24 degrees. So I'm gonna underline 24 and follow it right across. And there you see that 22.4 again. That's a number we'll use in other ones. Um, so to finally solve 
for pressure of hydrogen gas, we're going to minus the 22.4 from the 750, 754.2. So let's do that real quick. And I get 731.8. And that is our pressure of hydrogen gas. Now, you can see that we're going to need that on part C. And part C gets a little messy. I don't have a whole lot of room, so um, bear with me. It wants to find the value of R based on this reaction. We know what R really should be, 0.0821. Um, and remember, our, our units of this um, need to be ATM liters. Uh, moles and Kelvin. So that's what we want to find. So um, to do this, I'm going to do this up on the side. We're going to use PV equals NRT. Now I'm going to do my algebra real quick because I want to solve for R. So I'm going to divide both sides by NT and NT. And that cancels that out. So now PV divided by N and T will equal R. So that's what we need to do. Um, so on this other side, I'm going to kind of start labeling things that we know. Because we need to find pressure. We need to find volume. We need to find the number of moles, which is N. And we got to find the temperature. Well, to start with, in problem or part B, if you will, we found the pressure of the hydrogen gas, but it is not in atmospheric pressure. It is in millimeters of mercury. So we got to convert that. Um, uh, let's convert that uh, right above on the top left. So that would be 731.8. And then remember to convert that, there's 760 millimeters of mercury in one ATM. Um, now we do our math real quick. It's going to be uh, less than one, and this ends up being 0 0.9629. That's what I got. You can double check my number. Now um, let's look at our volume. And again, we're talking always about a gas, and so we're talking about hydrogen gas. And it does tell us in the problem. 52.7, but that's in milliliters. So we got to change that to liters. You don't need to show me this. We're just moving the decimal place um, three spots. So this would be 0 0.0527 and then liters. Let's put our units up here because that's they're really important. Um, I'm going to skip moles just for a second because that one will take a little bit more time. But temperature, we have the temperature, but it's in Celsius. So we know we're going to take 273 plus our Celsius to get our Kelvin. And that's 297. So let's put that up here. And there. So we have all of them, but the number of moles. Um, Here's where we're going to use our dimensional analysis um, to find the, the number of moles. And they give us up there the amount of magnesium. So I'm going to start right here. Here's where we get to use our dimensional analysis. It's a really small piece, but that's grams of magnesium. And then we want to go to hydrogen. We need moles of hydrogen. So from grams, we're going to divide by the molar mass, which is around 24.3 grams to one mole of mg. And then we need to use our balanced chemical um, formula or equation to find it. Now, the math isn't going to hurt here because it's one to one. Um, so one mole mg equals one mole of H2. And that's what we're looking for, moles of H2. 
So this comes out when I do my math, I got a real small number, 0 0.00208. So I'm gonna write that over here with all our numbers. Now we have everything that we need uh, to solve uh, the equation. So I'm gonna erase a little bit that, that uh, where we found the number of moles. So I have room and all I'm gonna do is kind of plug and chug these numbers in. So I need P, which is our pressure, 0 0.9629 times our volume, 0 0.0527 divided by our number of moles, 0 0.00208 times our temperature, 297. And this will give us R. And now we know what it should be. Um, it doesn't always work out this way, but in this case, this works out really well. Um, and we get our exact number. Now, remember this number here is atmospheres uh, per liter divided by moles Kelvin. So, all right, there's number one. Um, and I think that one takes like the most thought and process. We have to use dimensional analysis. We have to use Dalton's law. We have to use the ideal gas law. So there's quite a bit in there. All right, pause if you need to, go back. Um, let's do number two. change my view here so I can edit it, give us some more room to do number two. All right, so let's do number two. Um, the important thing about this one is the bolded letters. It says collected over water. So that's the important part there. Um, that's where we have to use Dalton's law. And I do that on the test and everything, but anything that says collected over water, you know you're gonna use Dalton's law. So here we go. Um, a sample of gas containing 0.311 grams of helium is collected over water in which it occupies 1.97 liters at 26 degrees Celsius. What is the room pressure? So here's our key, what we got to get to. The room pressure is the total pressure. So what we have here to find is our pressure, and I'm going to call it the room because that's our will be our total pressure, will equal the pressure of the water plus the pressure of the helium gas. So those are the things that we got to find right now. Now, let's find the easier one first, I would say, what is the pressure of the water? Well, this is where you're going to look at the top of uh, your paper and look at the water vapor pressure table. It says 26 degrees. And so what is 26 degrees? Go ahead and look it up. Yep, you should have got 25.2. Now, we need to remember that this is in millimeters of mercury, so we'll get that here in a second. Now, we need to find room pressure. There's our X. So we got to find the pressure of helium. We can do that by using PV equals NRT. And so, we can set this up. We want to find pressure. To do that, we divide both sides by V, and that will leave us with pressure. We'll get pressure equals NRT over V. So now we just got to figure out all the stuff. 
n is the number of moles. Well, we don't have the number of moles, but it gives us the amount of grams. And we can convert grams to moles. We've been doing this a ton. So let's do it. A little dimensional analysis, one stepper. 0 .1, 0 0.311 grams of helium. And then we'll look up the molar mass of helium on the periodic table. It is right about four grams to one mole. So my number of moles I get, I'm gonna put this in a different color so we can know our numbers that we're gonna use. I got 0 0.778. Sorry for that interruption. It is band day here. So there's a couple announcements, but that's our number of moles. Oh, I missed a zero in there. Let's redo this. 0 0.0778. Um, we know what R is. That's our constant, um, 0 0.0821. Um, next would be temperature. And you're gonna see this a lot. You're gonna get to second nature that we gotta change this to um, Kelvin. And so this becomes uh, 299. And volume's already there too. So now we can plug everything in. So I'm gonna do that over on the left here. Number of moles. So pressure will equal the number of moles, 0 0.0778 times R, 0 0.0821, times our temperature, 299. All of that divided by one, uh, was it 1.97 liters. Okay, do your calculations. We're gonna find that the pressure of our helium gas is, what did Mr. Foss get? I got 0.969, and we have to remember this is in ATM. Now we're not done. We've got to take that and put it back into our top equation over here to find. Now it doesn't matter which one you do, but the one, the 25.2 of the pressure of water is in millimeters of mercury. We got to get it into, uh, get them both into the same thing. We got ATM and we got mercury. Um, just for the sake of the room, I'm going to take this ATM and put it into millimeters of mercury. And we know that one ATM equals 760 millimeters of mercury. So when we do our calculations there, I find that this was about 737. So now what do we do? That's our pressure of our helium. Let's put it in there. So we're gonna add that 737. 737 plus 25.2, our final answer. What is the pressure of the room? Well, Mr. Foss gets 762.2. All right, um, there's the first two. Um, I'm gonna actually end this video here so the videos don't get super long for everybody. So there's the first two, and then we'll can continue to working from there. All right, see you in a little bit.